thanks for joining me. My name is Elizabeth Alfano, and I've been working in the visual arts for over 15 years. Either in my art gallery or my accessories design business, I've met hundreds of artists over the years. Painters, designers, glassblowers, chefs, all working from their tiny, closed-off studios. Join me on Fear No Art Chicago, and let's go behind the scenes to check out all that's being made and get into the hearts and minds and souls of Chicago's artists. When I visit artists and art galleries, I might head to River North, the Fine Arts Building, Wicker Park, but Bridgeport? That's new for me. Let's see what's taking shape at the Bridgeport studio of ceramic artist Jay Strummond. Hi Elizabeth, thanks Hi. for coming. Jay, thank you for having me. This is an amazing studio. It's absolutely huge. I didn't even know there was this much space available in Chicago. Yeah, Bridgeport's unique in that way. You're so lucky to just have a playground here. And, and I can't sort of focus my eyes, there's so much going on. Of course you have pottery, but I see you also have a lot of paintings. Yeah, the seasons tend to dictate a little bit of, about what I do over the course of the year. So you do that when you're not doing pottery? Yeah, when the kilns are cool in the winter, I tend to work on paper and then uh, sometimes canvas and photography. Oh, so you do photography as well? I do. Wow, it must be hard for you to focus. It is, I've been working <laughs> on it slowly. So what draws you to clay rather than painting or photography? Well, clay was sort of my first love with uh, the arts. And uh, in high school, I had a really great teacher. and it Makes all the difference. Yeah, all the way through, it's just been another great teacher, another great teacher. And right. Chicago has been you know, very accommodating. And, it ha it's a yeah. good city for ceramics? It's a good city for the arts, I think. In the world, we're probably, I would say, the best. Really? Because I think of New York as sort of really contemporary art and California as sort of groundbreaking crafts, if you will. And so I wasn't sure where Chicago fit into that balance. Yeah, I think we're the judges. We say oh. what... Uh, oh, we dictate what happens? Around the world. Good for us. Good right? for us. Are these things that are finished pieces or things that are in the works? Yeah, this is uh, sort of a second or third generation of a discovery I had probably two or three years ago when I was working with like uh, one of the regular bowls that I was putting glass in the bottom. Where? Oh, so, yeah. glass in the bottom, right. Yeah. And then uh, I was working and I was grinding sort of some glass that had dripped through and I had ground through the bottom of the bowl and so all of a sudden I saw this light and pretty soon the lights went off and the whole world shifted. Everything reconfigured and the future was sort of written for the next 10 years. So you went into a whole new body of work for yeah. a period of about 10 years from a mistake? Yeah. When you see ceramic artists and pottery artists, their bowl after functional shape, mm -hmm. after tea shape, mm -hmm. and I wonder if that ever gets old for you. I don't know, it doesn't for me. The bowls are uh, kind of what keeps my aesthetic in check. This is one of my favorite bowls of the year. Look at this, what's this? Is this your signature? Yeah, those are little chops. That's actually a pine tree. There's three trees on the bottom of the bowl. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So bowls for me have turned into this, almost like a place of worship for me. I, oh, you know, nice. like when I go to throw bowls, it's because I really love to just put a, a piece of clay on the wheel, you know, and light some incense and just relax and see what, you know, comes out of the way. Right, right. So is this sort of, for a musician, they do scales every day and you do a bowl every day to sort of stay in check? Absolutely. Stay at one with what you're doing? You know, clay is like a person and so depending on the day and what kind of clay you're using, you know, you can't force something or somebody to be something that it doesn't want to be. So with bowl making, what's nice about it is, is that the, the, you are this person in this day mm -hmm. interacting with clay which is like another person and you collaborate in this moment and most times it's very happy and <laughs> and uh, depends on the day <laughs> exactly sometimes it's tragic I mean if you've got a lot on your mind and you go to the wheel and you're trying too hard or whatever you see it's, that exemplified in clay. absolutely and then where does this color come from? It's more of a light brown? Yeah, this is actually what the trees extract from the earth when they're growing. So that's the ash that flies through the kiln and lands on the piece. And as the kiln gets hotter, the ash actually melts and becomes a glaze. Okay, so in addition to the sort of clay you choose, 
the kind of day you're having, and the tree that has been fired in the kiln, that all composes together to make your piece. And the people that help fire the kiln also make a huge difference. Really? How so? Well, it takes four or five days to fire the kiln, so you have to have a crew of people working in shifts. And so some shifts, they're very energetic and stirring ash, and then other shifts are chill, and so you get this big personality. It's like really? a snapshot of a... Of so the energy levels of people working at the kiln end up affecting the finished piece? I think so, yeah. You know, I'm curious, what would you say to those who say, ah, oh, pottery, ceramics, it's not fine art, it's a craft? And uh, is that a slam or is that a compliment? I, I think it's fine that they say that. If they want to draw a line for us to go by, you know, the critics and everything. Personally, I think beauty and, and intellectualism are the same. So semantics are somebody else's game. And I see. I'm, I'm not so interested in so arguing don't it. I don't care. I do think that, you know, you do need to spend some time at your craft right. and learn and then you can express and when you can express and evoke a feeling in somebody, beauty or tragedy or love or whatever. And that's all you need. That's art. Really? It's life. Yeah. And as your life goes on as an artist, you get the opportunity to really go deep into the psyche of your culture, yourself, your city. You so know. you find that your art is almost a mirror for you, and so it reflects back to you who you are? For sure. And my culture. Well, I'd love to get my hands into some clay. Okay. So we put a little water on the piece and, you know, both hands, plenty of moisture. And essentially this is already centered, but when you first put the clay on the wheel, it's gonna be a little bit kind of wobbly. So our, our goal is, is to, to sort of make those wobbles go away. And then we're gonna actually go in and really open this up. So I'm pushing down from above and using my thumbs to bring that clay out and kind of up. Uh -huh. We're gonna actually squeeze this clay between our fingers and we're gonna oh. form a wedge and we're gonna lift that, that right. clay up. It's one of the things I love about working on the wheel is that you're really sort of defying gravity. You did something with your thumbs. Whoops, wait, wait. So you're gonna squeeze together uh -huh. and lift and I, see what happens. I make no guarantees. <laughs> Holy hey, cow. relax, slow down all right. a little oh, bit. Oh, nice, all right, nice, all right, nice. all right. Stop. It's driving out, of, I'm not sure how. <laughs> I'm losing the top. Oh, there it is, there it is, wait, wait, hey, there's wait. there's a pot. There's a <laughs> so I'll sometimes come in and just do a little thumbprint. I like to try to work with the clay at every point that it's, that it's susceptible to information. Uh-huh. So you kind of have to be with it all the time. And that's right. the unique thing about having a studio and right. being able to work and have right. your work around you. Yes, so you can really make your mark and make it more than just a bowl. Well, you can collaborate fully. Remember how we were talking about clay being a person? Right, so, yes. So, you know, you have to get to know that person. And the pots can be looked at architecturally uh -huh. or they can look, be looked at like as figure. So I tend to do both. Poor thing, my poor bull. Okay. It's a beautiful bowl. They, my theory is, is the first 10 bowls that you ever make are the best bowls that you're ever going to make. Really? Af after that, it's... Too much in your head after that? You yeah. know too much? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know nothing, so... Masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing me... Thanks for coming. ...what you me. have in your studio and uh, letting me play around with clay. This has been a lot of fun. There's an artist and a creative spirit around every corner and in every alleyway. Join me on the next Fear No Art Chicago as we go behind the scenes to check out the fascinating and unique world of the independent artist. For more information, visit fearnoartchicago.com. We should have probably got you an apron. We'll get that over to the Art Institute oh, immediately. Right, right. Yeah, they're waiting. Oh. Stop the wheel. I'm sorry. You got a nice window. And I can uh, invade your space. This is a Allowed. That was a thrill. Mm, wine. It's not just for breakfast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see it here. <laughs> try some of this. Here you go. So much you think. Shut up and try some <laughs> Support for Fear No Art Chicago is provided by the L. H. Selman Gallery. Paperweights are the crown jewels of glass artistry. You can discover both antique and modern paperweights at the L. H. Selman Gallery in Chicago's Fine Arts Building.